today's throwback, we're having a look at the Mattel DC superheroes. We're having a look today at Bane. Exclusive comic included. Bane came to us from the first wave of DC superheroes. Multiposable figure, though truth be told, he really wasn't multiposable. We'll get into that in a second. For ages recommended, four and up. Comes to us from the good folks at Mattel. On the back of the package, the four figures that made up the first wave, we've got ourselves Batman, Scarecrow, Bane, and Killer Croc. Collect them all. Uh, actually, you'll also notice, too, there's absolutely no read-up. No read-up whatsoever. We just get a very generic uh, back card. Well, what I am going to do is take a break. I'm going to get this opened up, and when we come back, we're going to get a better look at Bane again. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. And with Bane, you'll get yourself a comic book. On the front of the comic book, you'll get a little Starburst Blast, a little uh, additional piece that would have been behind the figure when he was in packaging. We can just slide that right off. And then underneath, we've got Batman fighting Bane in Batman Detective Comics No Man's Land. One thing that's nice, at least, is it appears to be a full-blown comic. It's not just a rushed-through uh, attempt to throw in something with an action figure, although we've gotten that in the past. Batman fighting Bane. That's a nice image of Bane right there. I like that one right there. Very cool. And another picture of Bane on the back there. I'm the king here. And I'm home. Moving that out of the way. Let's actually have a look at Bane. Now, right off the bat, the biggest flaw with this figure is exactly what it's doing right now. From the torso up, you get a pretty good figure. From the torso down, you get yourself a slightly disappointing figure. And it all stems from one thing. It stems from this section right here. This would be Bane's crotch, this underroo area that Spot is pointing at. Before we actually have a look at that, let's look at the top of the figure, where you, I gotta say, for an older figure, I've always really liked this Bane. He's extremely ripped. You can see all the veins and everything in his arms. On the side, you've got the Venom, the Venom tube going up to the back of his head. You can even see that there's actually hair on his chest, though it's not painted. It's just the sculpt of hair. But I really like this effect that's on the arms. Very veiny, very impressive, very intimidating. Uh, unfortunately, he has no articulation in the, in the bicep area where you can swivel his arms. Uh, his arms are on a pin and socket, so they move out. Uh, they move uh, back and forth, back and forth. And he also has a bend in the elbow. But he doesn't have a swivel in bicep, which really would have added to this figure Definitely, though, loving the veins here. You can see where it just looks like the venom is pumping through him. I would be almost inclined to probably take something to try to color that, just to bring it out a little bit more than what it is. The face, though, I really like the mask. It's a very classic design, but it's done exceptionally well. It doesn't have a lot of the white, though. In the mask itself, it's more of a darker gray, darker red. You can see the zipper up the top there. Obviously, the biggest and best comparison I can make is I'll take this Bane, and I'll bring in the DC Universe Classics Collect and Connect Bane. And while this is a much superior Bane for overall the fact that, you know, he moves, he has much more articulation than, than this Bane has. I gotta give props to this one though. This one doesn't have nearly enough the veins that I really like on this one here. Uh, the face itself, we'll get the camera to zoom in here. The face itself is on par with, its, with its, the other mask. The tubes are much smaller you see on the Collect and Connect Bane versus that of the DC Universe or DC Super Heroes Bane here. Uh, the arms are about the same give or take. The tubes are roughly about the same, a little slight variation. The tube is, I think the tube is nicer on the Collect and Connect Bane versus that of the Superheroes Bane. But I really like the arms. I love, I wish Mattel had just simply carried over those arms in some way, because actually the biceps, 
the shoulder area as well is much larger on this vein than that of this vein here. And you can actually see when you start looking at the two of them together, the collect and connect vein is almost a little too tanned. Just a little too tanned. He's got the spray on tan going on there. Whereas this vein, probably a little too light, but I think the skin tone reflects the figure a little bit better than, uh, than maybe having it too tanned like what we've got here. The belt is also about on par with the uh, the original vein here, but I really like these arms. That vein detail is uh, is very impressive, and this is one of the reasons why I wanted to go back and shoot the re-reviews, so to speak, the throwbacks on some of these classic um, superhero figures. It's just because even though they are older figures, they're actually still really solid. The Scarecrow was really solid. Um, Dark Side was also a really good figure, and then you get some figures like Cyborg Brainiac, which we'll never see again. Um, we've also seen Azriel. Now he's been re-released with Super with Batgirl in a two-pack, which I wanted to pick up at some point. Um, the Bane undershirt is a, a loose piece; it's actually a separate rubberized piece. But uh, I like this part up. This part up. Where the problem comes with this figure, though, is when you start dealing with the bottom half. Unfortunately, uh, some way along the, along the road, somebody at Mattel decided that a good idea was to have him pre-posed. <sighs> because ultimately what you're doing is you're getting a really solid figure in Bane, and you're ruining him by having him in a sculpt where he's always crouching. You can take the legs and extend them out completely, and I'm going to do this right now. Extend them out completely, but what you have is something like that. Not imposing at all. It looks like he's trying to do the spits, splits and he just can't do it. Sure, he does have knee articulation. He has a knee bend and he has a bend in the foot, swivel in the boot. But he, the problem really resides right here. If there was only a way that these legs could bend straight down, you'd actually have yourself a really solid, solid Bane. Unfortunately, it doesn't do that. So you either have him standing like so, or, I'll just move the camera down a bit, like so, there we go, or you kind of have to have one leg bent, and you kind of have him just in a squatting position. And it's, no matter how you do it, it looks, it makes the figure look awkward. It either makes it look, well, he's got that come get some jet, uh, pose going on, but I really would have loved if the figure could have uh, properly stood. And unfortunately, it does not do that. I think the details on the boots are really nice. And really, again, for a comparison, we'll bring in the DC Universe version. It's very on par with itself. A little shinier in the boots on the DC Universe version than that of the DC superheroes, but very similar in design. Very, very similar in design. So overall, in the way of articulation, as Bot had already indicated, he has the uh, rotation in the head. The head doesn't really move up and down. It just kind of moves left and right. So it's probably a pegged head, not so much ball jointed. He has a pin and socket shoulder. They rotate back and forth, uh, bend at the elbow, rotation in the hand. Uh, the hand doesn't pivot or anything like that. It's just a swivel, swiveled waist. Legs go forward, back, out. No, not out, actually. Back and forth. Bend at the knee. Bend the foot. Rotation in the boot. I suppose if you wanted to, you could get Bane doing... You could have Bane breaking the bat over his knee. Or whether it was that knee. But you kind of have to have him standing on something. If you had him standing on something, it probably would deter away from the fact that this pre-post sculpt makes this Bane, Bane almost uh, unposable. If you had maybe like a box or something like you put him right on there, that wouldn't look too bad. But I really wish they had not ruined this Bane by doing this with the legs. I understand that the DC superheroes uh, figures were a little more limited in articulation, but when you get such a solid sculpt in the top half of Bane, the fact that the bottom ruins it is an absolute crime. It's a crime to action figures. Call to arms. Speaking of arms, though, those arms on Bane are nasty. Nasty in a good way. Nasty. And a shame, really, because in the way of a rating, from the top half of Bane, 
I'd almost be inclined to give him a rating of like an 8. When you get to the bottom half, he gets almost a rating of a 6. I think adding those two together and the cost of inflation, I think I'm going to give Bane as an overall figure, I'm going to give Bane a 6.5. Solid on the top half, but really the bottom ruins it for this figure that had they only found a way to maybe even re-release this figure in a two-pack and give him changed articulation, changed uh, parts in his lower body, it would make this figure so much better. Um, I've seen a couple of customizers change out the figure and give him a more suitable base that suits the figure and that he can actually stand. Unfortunately, I don't have a figure like that, but if certainly anybody has customized one and would like to send him my way, Spot is always open for ideas such as that. But this is a great figure, just a shame that the bottom half ruins it for him. Today's throwback, Spot was having a look once again at the DC Superheroes. This was the DC Superheroes Bane. Great figure, disappointing bottom, I guess is the best way to describe it. Thanks for watching, guys. Certainly stick around. More throwbacks are heading your way. See you next time.